this is Deb Prechuk from Pain Free Posture, Minnesota, and today we're bringing you the sideline windmill along with a shoulder mobilization exercise to prep you for that sideline windmill. And we're also going to talk about some of the props you need for it and how to set up the shoulder correctly. So to begin, a couple of things that you might need are some padding for the head and the neck. I've got a two inch and a one inch prop here. You can use a book covered with towels that will suffice. I've also got a six inch block, which is a great prop for doing a lot of the postural therapy menus. You can use that. If you don't have something like that at home, a lot of people are going to have foam roller kicking around. And you can see that those are also in the six inch range. So you're going to need something like that to support your leg for your sideline windmill. So we're going to put this to the side. And we're going to talk to you about setting up your shoulder to do these exercises correctly. So first things first. We're going to take a look at the hook line position, um, important for any type of laying down um, exercise on the floor, as well as uh, things like static back, uh, supine groin with the tower, how do you get your shoulder into the correct position to maximize the potential. So we're going to go ahead and set up our hook line position, which is six inch distance apart at the knees, feet aligned as well, underneath the sit bones. And this is my favorite go-to cue. Couple of things. Make sure the head, if you feel like the chin is poking or your gaze is too far forward, you want to actively drop the chin down. If you're unable to do that, that's your cue to go ahead and get a pillow, elevate the head, think of reaching and dropping the chin down. From there, getting the shoulder into the correct position, best advice is just go ahead, raise the arms up, tuck into that loose golfer's grip we like to cue, feel the shoulder joint move in the socket. A lot of folks when they have dysfunctional shoulders they just turn the wrist and the hand freely. So lock out that elbow and feel yourself move that shoulder in the joint. You can see that's quite a bit different. Creates thoracic extension. From there then turn the palms a little bit more outward or uh, you know towards your body I guess is a better way of describing that when you're laying down and then go ahead and simply allow the arms to float down. Now that might cause your chin to poke up again, so that's your cue to go in and reposition the head. That's your good setup position for static back. All right, now from here, we wanna talk about mobilization of your thoracic chain. Um, we're taking you past where you're in these static postures, only moving in one direction. So most best advice is go ahead and get two lacrosse balls, all right, tape them together. If you find that this is too intense to begin with, go ahead and get two tennis balls. Um, that's a regression or a way to get started with this. You're going to place these two things on either side of your spine along the transverse process, and we want to be in that middle towards the upper back area. Um, don't go through what we would feel is sketchy. It might take your breath away, it might be a little intense, but it shouldn't be uh, so difficult that you can't move through it. So you're going to go ahead, take that down on the floor. I'm just going to eyeball where I think I need that to be. And right there I can tell as I'm poning up into it, it's just a little too high for me. I'm going to make sure it's on either side of my spine. I'm going to go ahead and lay down. Now that's increasing my thoracic um, extension. We want to make sure we've got our six inch distance apart. We're going to close up the rib cage, keep a little bit of engagement through the gluteals to keep that torso good and stabilized. I'm going to actively work on dropping my chin down towards the chest. Now from here, what I'm going to do is raise the arms up like we just practiced. I'm going to turn my palms in, set it up, pull the shoulder blades together, and we're going to bring that down. Once you're here, you've got some options. You can simply hold this position for a couple of minutes. You can go through some single arm, flexion and extension. Notice that I'm turning through the shoulder joint and you can do five or ten on one side then move to the other. Another option for you, perhaps the next day you practice this, is you could alternate between those two. Keep a mind on the chin rib cage connection. And a third option for you is to bring your hands, this would be a variation off of the pullovers position and you can return back. Little oscillation through those tight places, work on bringing the ribs down through the glutes. So I recommend that you do something like that for about two minutes to begin with and then you can move into your more dynamic movement which is the sideline windmill. 
And so what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself down on the side. You're going to find six inches to prop yourself up on. 90 degrees at the hip joint line. Pretty good and stable. Okay, again, the foam roller could go here. And we want to get that shoulder stable, pull the scapula into the body, and lay the head down. Now, if your head's cranked, you're very uncomfortable, again, you could use one of these pads or pillows so that you've got something to level you out and you can rotate through that. From there, be mindful of your top shoulder blade. So we are going to add torso rotation here. I'm going to make sure that my shoulder blade is stable in the body. I feel it glide towards the center. Now what I'm going to have the, my torso do is give a full rotation versus just being sloppy through that scapula. Okay. So we're going to rotate through the torso. From there, I'm going to turn through the shoulder joint. It's going to travel on the floor. I'm going to move this out of the way. It's going to travel on the floor, and I'm going to move with my neck, following it all the way through until I get to 180 degrees. I'm going to rotate that shoulder in the socket. My pelvis and lumbar spine quite stable here because I've got the support. And I'm going to follow that all the way up and back over to the beginning. So again, the shoulder blade stable. I turn through the torso. I follow that up and around. And I come all the way through. Find 180 degrees. Bring that up and around. There's a little bit more of an advanced variation there. Rotate through, all the way up and around. And you could continue through some of that snow angel patterning down by the side and swing that up and around. So that's your sideline windmill. That would be a progression off of your hip crossover stretch, or if you're unable to get into something like the um, upper spinal floor twist, okay, with this kind of a position, you can see how that's just a little bit more of a dynamic progression on your way through. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Give it a try. I recommend that you do five to 10 on each side. Let us know how it goes for you, and uh, you know where to find us, painfreeposturemn.com. Thanks for watching.